So, no. <clears throat> I, I like Chick Fil A. I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna like it after this video. But. Ever since I first went to Chick Fil A, it's been one of my favorite restaurants. I've always loved their chicken sandwiches, and their sauce always hits the spot. <laughs> However, the college that I recently graduated from is in an area where there's no Chick Fil A nearby. So when I was at school, I could never have it. Last year, when the semester finally came to an end, I was driving back home to get to my parents' house, and I had the idea to get Chick-fil-A. I left my school in the morning, and it was a four-hour drive to get back home. When I got about an hour away from home, my cravings got the better of me, and I saw Chick-fil-A and stopped. It was a Chick-fil-A that I had never been to before, but it looked relatively new and was very busy. I got in the drive through line, which was long, but moving fast. I ordered the number one, which is what I usually got, of a chicken sandwich, fries, and a drink. I was so hungry that I decided to park and eat it there. <laughs> the Chick-fil-A was in a large shopping area that had a mall with a really big parking lot connected to it. So I drove to an open area of the mall parking lot that wasn't very busy. I started to eat, but before long I was kind of annoyed with the way that the sun was shining right into my front window onto me. I moved parking spaces down to where there was a shady spot near a tree. As I backed up my car out of the spot and started to drive, I saw that there was another car that was parked a little ways away from me that started to leave at the same time. I drove over and parked next to a tree, and the car followed me and parked about 10 spots away from me. Okay. I found it odd, but overall was more focused on eating. No, no, that's sus. That's eat and drive. I mean, I don't condone it, but in, in this situation, you know, just eat and drive. That's us. While later, when I decided to continue with my drive home, I had forgotten all about the car and started to drive away. But when I did, I noticed the car start to drive with me. I never bothered to look to see who was driving it, and it was too far away to tell by this point. I once again found it odd, but what could I do? I got back on the road and then merged onto the freeway that was close by. I noticed the entire time that the car that was seemingly following me did the same. I got kind of worried when I saw this. I wondered why someone would follow me. Had I accidentally cut him off or something before? I kept on driving down the road and the car remained behind me the entire time. I tried some things like slowing down or changing lanes, but he kept following me. I still couldn't really tell much about how the driver looked because I still wasn't able to get a very good look at him. The closer I got to home, the more concerned I became because I didn't want to go all the way home and have this guy potentially know where I live. When I got about 10 minutes away from home, I decided to pull off the highway again and take the exit. I didn't really have much of a plan, but I knew I shouldn't go to my house with somebody following me. There was a little town that had a few stores and gas stations. I pulled into the parking lot of a supermarket and parked in a spot in the back where there weren't many other cars. Of course, the car that was following me did as well. I got out my phone and called my parents. I was going to tell them that I had been followed and ask them what to do. But before I could finish telling them, I saw that the car had parked in a spot behind me in a few spaces to the left. Wow. I noticed that the driver's door of the car opened and both passenger's doors in the back did as well. I saw three large men all get out of the car and start heading towards me. <clears throat> what you doing? Why are you playing? Get your shit together. Floor it, haul it, kick rocks. Meet, meet that mother clubs. In this moment, as they approached my car, I panicked and slammed my foot on the gas pedal and sped away. I saw the men then stop and begin to run back to their car. This is where I got lucky in a way. There happened to be a police car that was driving on the quiet road connecting the supermarket with other businesses. When he saw me speeding away in an almost reckless way, he pulled me over. The car that was following me slowed down too, but then drove away. When the officer got to my window, he told me I was driving a little wild, and I told him my situation. He then gave me just a warning to slow down and drive safer, and offered to drive behind me for a few miles to make sure that I wasn't followed. I took him up on the offer, and luckily I was able to make it home safely without ever seeing that car again. I still wonder sometimes though why that car was following me for so long, and what the men wanted. To get up in that ass. No con. Straight friction. Skin on skin. 
Gripper, this story happened about a year ago. I was at Chick-fil-A with my girlfriend one night. It was one of both of our favorite restaurants, and we would get it all the time. Usually, we would go through the drive-thru, but tonight, we decided to eat inside the restaurant. It was a little bit later at night, and not very many other people were there at all. We sat in a booth on the far side of the restaurant, and were all by ourselves for the most part. We were eating, joking around, and just having normal conversation, when all of a sudden I heard a banging at the window right in front of me. We were sitting by the window, so I was super startled. Because it was dark out and the way the window was, I couldn't really see out of it very well at first, but when I looked, I saw a man. There was a guy who looked pretty mean. He was angrily banging on the glass right in front of us. My girlfriend and I were both pretty startled, and we watched the man to see what his problem was. He started to yell something at us, but I couldn't understand what he was yelling. The man wore a dark sweatshirt with the hood up and appeared to wear glasses and have a brown goatee. I don't know if he was insane or what, because I certainly hadn't done anything to make him angry. The man then suddenly stopped yelling and turned his back on us, then sprinted away into the night. My girlfriend and I both looked at each other in shock. What was that? she asked. I figured the guy was insane or on drugs or something like that, but we were both just glad that he was gone. Like many Chick-fil-A's, it was next to multiple businesses, so we figured he had come from one of those. We both talked about it for a few minutes, and then we're ready to go back home. I had to use the bathroom, so I told my girlfriend that I would be right back and then we would leave. Oh, duh. I walked inside the bathroom into the urinal and did my business. Uh. As I was in there, though, I remember seeing someone was using one of the stalls in the men's room. Uh. When I was done, I got to the sink and began washing my hands. There we go. I heard the stall door start to open. Oh, God. I casually looked over to see who was coming out. Oh. I couldn't believe my eyes when oh. I saw the same man who had been outside. Yeah. He stopped in his place and just stared at me. Then, slowly, a really wide and creepy grin came over his face. I didn't waste any time and quickly left the bathroom. Yes, you did. 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 You'd wasted so much time. You could have used the bathroom and then just walked out without washing on their hands, not their fingers. You could have just shook it and just. That's what you should have did. But now you was curious. You wanted to see who it was. You wanted to wash your hands. As I could. I saw my girlfriend was waiting for me by the door, and she could see the panic on my face. She asked me what was wrong, and I just told her we had to go. I didn't pay any attention to if the man followed us or not. When we got to the car, I told my girlfriend about how I had seen the man in the bathroom. She was really shocked to hear this, and we drove home after that. Thankfully, we never saw the man again. What was the most crazy thing is that we had a view of the only entrance to the restaurant the entire time, and we never saw the man come inside the door. I don't know how he was suddenly inside the bathroom, but thinking about it gives me the creeps. Yeah. I worked at a Chick-fil-A a few years back. This was the weirdest thing to ever happen. When I worked there, I would oftentimes be at the drive through window handing customers their food. On one day, I don't remember the exact day of the week, but I know it was a weekday. Things were not all that busy, and it was in the afternoon. I remember we had a lot of cars in the drive through and, and I dealt with many different people. At one point, though, I recognized a man that I was handing food to. He had been there not long ago. It was a little weird, but I gave him his food and moved on. Then I saw him again about 20 minutes later. This time, he only ordered a drink. I gave it to him, and he left only to come back again 10 minutes later ordering another drink. This time... If you go to a restaurant and just get a drink, you're weird. Like, especially if, like, the line... Line? Ha <laughs> ha! Especially if, like, the line is, like, hella long, and you just go in there just to get a drink, you... Nah, you sus as hell. Jokingly made a comment to the man that he was here again, but the man denied it. He claimed this was his first time there, and I was wrong. He also didn't seem very friendly at all. He kind of said it in a rude way. I gave him his drink and he left. 
I didn't see him for another 30 minutes or so, but then he came back again. This time, he just got a water. Every time he would come back, he would seemingly order just one small thing. I was really confused by this behavior. He came back several more times, getting small items each time, and he seemed angry as well. It was one of the strangest things that I had seen. I got up for work that night, and on my way home had to stop at the store to get a couple of things. I was in the store for no longer than five minutes, when suddenly I saw the same man walking down an aisle about 20 feet away. He didn't seem to notice me. I thought this was an insane coincidence, and I felt kind of creeped out because of just how crazy it was. I ended up leaving the store shortly after, and in the coming days I forgot about the man for the most part. But less than a week later, I was at my house taking out the trash, when I saw the same man once again. This time he was walking down my street. I lived in a fairly big neighborhood, but I had never seen him prior to being at the Chick-fil-A. I felt really creeped out and went back inside. I'm not sure if the man saw me or not, but after that occurrence, I've never seen the man since. I just think it's really creepy how all that happened. Sometimes I wonder if he was stalking me or something like that. Yes! In fact, it's so crazy that a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them the story. I believe But I know what happened. Either way, I'm glad I haven't seen the man since. But he probably seen you way more times than you seen him. And that's creepy as hell. Four! I thought it was three stories. I'm a female who used to work at Chick-fil-A when I was in my late teens and early 20s. So, look. Y'all see this? Right here? The numbers? Is that like the number of locations that they got? Because damn. Overall, it was a fun place to work and I made lots of friends. Everyone who worked there was super nice, which is why I stayed working there for so long. However, at one point, we hired a new guy named Justin. Okay. From the day he started working there, Justin just seemed like a jerk. He was rude and selfish and would do things like go on his phone during shifts, take really long bathroom breaks, and leave early. I found out he was a relative to one of our managers, and as a favor to his family, she was able to get him a job. He was a somewhat troubled guy who had gotten into some problems before, but it was thought that the job would help him out. For the first few weeks, though, it didn't. For the most part, when I first met him, though, he was rather nice to me. Shortly after that, he asked me out during his shift, though. He basically asked what I was doing if I wanted to hang out or go someplace with him. I really didn't want to and told him that I was busy. Over the next few times that we worked together, he remained persistent and would ask me to hang out after work or something like that almost every time. When I would say no or come up with excuses, he would seem to grow increasingly angry. I also heard from another female worker that he had been doing the same to her. He was a bigger guy almost looked like a football player as he was over six feet tall with very short hair and strong looking. One night, he asked me to hang out after work as he saw me clocking out for my lunch break. I told him no again, but this time he grabbed my arm. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. He grabbed your arm, you grab his nuts and hold him. He asked me why in a very serious and frustrated tone. I told him I was sorry, but I just really didn't want to. The way he aggressively grabbed me made me kind of worried, and I decided in that moment I would have to talk to my boss, because I had really had enough of him. The rest of my shift was really busy, and as it was time for dinner, we had a big rush. I didn't get a chance to speak with my boss, Christine, and I even forgot about the situation. Finally, after things quieted down and we were no longer busy, my shift was over and it was time for me to go home. I clocked out and then got my coat and headed for my car. As I approached my car, I suddenly saw somebody jump out from behind it. Where I was parked, it was at the back side of the restaurant that was bordering a grassy area with a couple of trees. I saw the person who had jumped out was Justin. I was really surprised to see him. He said to me that I had no reason to dislike him and asked me what my problem was. I told him I really didn't have a problem with him. I just wanted to go home. You're a cluckhead. He was standing blocking my driver's door and I knew it would be hard for me to get around him. I asked him if he should get back to work. He then told me that he was off and he had been off for two hours just waiting for me. Wow. Obviously, this creeped me out even more. He then stepped towards me and grabbed my arm again. When he did, he shoved me in the opposite direction. There was a car parked two spaces away and I guess it was his because I heard it unlock. He then shoved me to the car and told me to get inside. I asked him why. 
He said he just wanted to talk. When he said this, his voice seemed to lighten up. I figured maybe I could have an actual conversation with him and let him know he needed to leave me alone and these things are not okay. I reluctantly got inside the car. Justin shut the door and then walked around and got inside to the driver's seat. Wow. But yeah. instead of talking to me. Y'all couldn't just talk outside? Y'all couldn't just talk outside? Y'all y'all couldn't just talk outside? Y'all couldn't just talk outside. Wow. So not only are you talking to a cluck ass who as clear as day can hurt you at any given moment. You getting in his car too? He immediately started up the car and began backing out. He also locked all of the doors in the process. Right away, I got a terrible feeling. Oh yeah. I asked him what he was doing. He said to shut up and then cursed at me. Wow. He then went on a short rant about how he hated working and how he had just quit. As he did this, the car started to speed up and he merged onto a busier road. I knew I was in trouble and took out my phone from my pocket and immediately went to dial 911. Justin saw me doing this, and I was just barely able to hit call on my phone. I could hear the ringing on the other end, but no more than a couple of seconds of this, and Justin reached over and grabbed my phone. He yelled at me, and we wrestled over the phone for a couple of seconds. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull it away from him fast enough. He got control of my phone, and then rolled down his window and tossed the phone out onto the side of the road. He then kept on driving. I was terrified. I knew that I could no longer call for help, and decided that I had to try to think of something to do. Justin just kept on driving down the road at a really fast speed. None of us said a word for several minutes. I was just doing my best to think about what I could possibly do to try to escape. Then, suddenly, I saw the amazing sight of flashing lights behind us. Justin started yelling and cursing, and eventually he pulled over. The police pulled over with him, and as soon as the car stopped, Justin opened his door and took off into the woods. I saw the police officer run after him, and I got out of the car. The officer told me to stay put, and then he called for backup. Eventually, more officers arrived, and a short time later, I heard that they had caught Justin after a foot chase. The police told me they had received a 911 call from my phone, and even though I didn't talk to anyone, they decided to investigate the area the call was made from. They only originally pulled over Justin because he was speeding, but after he took off running, they went after him. I was so grateful that I was all right and got out of that situation. After that, I took some time off of work and eventually returned to work there for a short time more. See, with that right there, Justin, crazy, crazy ass, clock ass, I feel like that's a, like, a, that's a, I feel like that's at most jobs, you know? You'll have like that, at least, at least you'll have that one person that's just like not really right or kind of clucked up in the head or does some cluck ass shit. Um, and those are the people you got to stay away from. You know what I mean? But I like Chick-fil-A. I've had no problems with Chick-fil-A. Um. Just saying, man. Just saying. Well, I got out my phone and called my parents. It was. I couldn't really see out of it very well at first. But when I looked, I saw a man. It was the bathroom. So I told my girlfriend that I would be right back and then we would leave. That one right there, we had, we had to use the bathroom? With the guy was on the window? You dead ass. You dead ass. You could have just like, just used it and just left. But you were doing too much. You almost got clocked up in the process. But that last one, that first one, no. No, yeah, no, no. The last one, the fourth one. I think it's the fourth one. I feel like every job has has one, at least one of those types of people. That's just that's just weird. And just clocked up. And and you just gotta keep your distance. But I don't think this really ruined my experience at Chick-fil-A. I don't really eat Chick-fil-A like that. When I do, it's busting every time. Just saying, keep cool, keep classy, and I love you, stay happy, my family.